Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to the Tally Ho Project. I'm standing here with Leo who is restoring this beautiful old sailing yacht and this is absolutely incredibly cool. So uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about this thing? Sure, well um, this boat was built in England in 1910, so 108 years ago she was launched and she's had a pretty interesting life. She won some races and, um, and then she was neglected for a long time and nearly wrecked and I got her in a pretty bad state down in Oregon. Um, just about a year ago now, I brought her up here to Washington and um, uh, just, yeah, completely rebuilding her from the bottom up, so replacing every piece of timber on the boat. It's an incredibly cool project and I would definitely say you got to check out his channel and watch how this thing goes through, seeing what has happened thus far and what it's going to happen in the future. I'm really looking forward to seeing this in the water. Sweet. But uh, yeah, let's actually dive in and take a look at what we're doing here today and we're going to have a little bit of fun. Tally Ho is a beautiful old boat, but she is old and decrepit uh, and it needs a lot of work. Most of the boards are rotted out, some of them are completely missing. Everything on it needs to be replaced, including the keel, which was recently replaced with a chunk of Purple Heart. And when I mean a chunk, I mean 16 inches by 16 inches by incredibly long, perfectly clear chunk of Purple Heart. Uh, the board wasn't actually quite long enough, so he had to scarf on another 13 feet. That's a six foot long scarf joint in Purple Heart. On top of that, he has live oak. And when I mean he has live oak, it's not just one stack or two stacks, but like 60 stacks. <laughs> Several semi trailers full of live oak, all two and three quarters inch rough sawn. And there is a lot of live oak on hand. I hope it's enough, but we'll find out in the end. The next thing we need to do is actually create the patterns. Each of the ribs have a different pattern. Each rib is different and every one of them is specific. And so this is a one-to-one -one scale of the ship to create all of these patterns. And each of these patterns then can get laid out on a board and one can try and find the best board to fit that pattern. So the grain w moves through the board and the grain can actually be straight over the curvature of the pattern. Then next Leo is going to grab a chainsaw or several other saws possibly and cut out a rough size of that pattern. This rough size then needs to be taken over and flattened. Now we could do this with like a router flattening jig, but in this case Leo designed it to fit a power planer, which is kind of an interesting idea. And the power planer can then ride on this and flatten out one side of the board fairly close to it. And every now and then you bring it back, you lower it down a little bit more, and you take another pass. And this way you can be very careful about not taking off too much at any given time. Just like with a router and jig, but with a plane instead. Kind of a nice little setup. Once we have one side completely flattened, then we can take it inside and go to the thickness planer. And I do like using a thickness planer. It is much, much faster than using a hand tool, but a hand tool is more fun, I guess. <laughs> but I got to know this uh, power planer fairly well. You have to run all of these frame pieces through this, and there are two halves to each frame, and there are two frames to each rib. So there are four halves that have to go through all of these steps. And this makes it uh, much, much quicker than doing it by hand. In this case, we can actually get a rib or two done a day, as opposed to um, one a week if you're to do it with hand tools. Next up, we're going to talk about my new favorite tool. This is called a ship saw. It's basically a big bandsaw. But with a normal bandsaw, you change the table angle to change the angle of the cut. And all of these ribs need to have a progressive angle all the way along at the angle changes. And so in this case, the whole head rotates and the bed stays put. And so you have one person feeding it through, and you have another person cranking the crank to change the angle. Here you can see on the side of the boards, there are all the angles written out from 2 degrees, 2.5 degrees, up to 8, 9, 10 degrees. And some of these will end up being 30, 40 degrees. And you can see how it slowly gets fed through, and slowly the angle has to change at each point in the board. And so each of those numbers along the board tell the operator what angle it needs to be along that board. Here you can see it needs to be eight degrees, and we have it at eight progressing up to eight and a half, or eight and a quarter, I can't quite see, it's out of focus. And then it's gonna be coming back down to eight degrees again. And so as this angle changes throughout the course of the cut, the angle of the head needs to be rotated to match it as well. And this is just a ton of fun, and an amazing thing to actually watch how it goes through this. 
takes a little time and patience, but one by one you can cut out each of these halves of each of the frames to make a full set. Yeah, it's a lot of work, but you can see how this whole thing actually works and runs. It is amazing to watch. And with it sped up, you can actually see how the head will change as it progresses through the cut, which is absolutely mind-blowing to me, but a lot of fun in person. So once we have these cut up, then we can actually get to gluing them up. And we're not actually going to use a glue, we're going to use a sealing paint. Uh, this paint will seal everything in between the gaps and allow a little bit of movement as the ship kind of flexes uh, through its use and expansion contraction. Once they have all been clamped up, then we can bore holes through and we're going to be putting pegs through these. The pegs are what actually hold these frames together. They're called trunnels or tree nails. So we're going to bore a 7 8 inch hole all the way through uh, this mass of wood. And these end up being between 4 and 4 and a half inches thick. Once we have a hole bored through, we can then create some tree nails, trunnels. And we're going to be basically putting a square peg through a big pencil sharpener. And this was uh, a surprising amount of fun to do once or twice, but having to do it hundreds and hundreds of times, it gets a little bit more boring. And every one of these frames get about a dozen tree nails, and there are 44 frames in total, so that's a lot to go. Once we cut them down into a dowel shape, then we need to cut a notch in either end. This notch will allow us to drive a wedge in from either side, and that wedge will be what holds these pegs in place. And the pegs are then what hold the frames together. Then we also need to create the wedges. And all of these wedges and dowels are made of black locust, a very resilient and hard wood, but it uh, works fairly well for this. Next, we can then drive the trunnels through the holes that we drilled. And you can see how they are extremely tight. Uh, that is so that they do not move because there is no glue holding these in place. They are held in place with friction and with the wedges. And slowly but surely, you can drive in the pegs and then you can drive in a wedge. And we leave one half in there to guide the wedge until it gets going. And then once the wedge is down in and flush with the top of the tree nail, then we can grab a saw and cut off the other side of the tree nail. And this will allow us to drive the wedge down into its total depth, which isn't too much farther, but uh, a little bit farther. Then when you're driving the wedge, you need to be careful not to bash your thumb or your finger or anything else like that. Oops, <laughs> I'll blame the mallet in this case because it is a pretty crummy mallet. I'm gonna have to make one for him that actually will make this much easier to go. Then you drive it down as far in as it'll go until it stops going any further, and then cut it off flush with the saw. And voila, you have a solid piece. The next thing we need to do is do a little bit of finishing on this, smooth out the sides, and we get to use the belt sander for this. Makes it a lot faster, uh, especially with live oak. It is a very difficult wood to plane by hand. Smoothing it out, gives you a really nice finish and it's basically ready to go in. The only thing we have to do is address the end of it. We need to create a notch in the end that will fit onto the keel of the boat. And yes, I do use power tools. I am actually far more comfortable with power tools than I am with hand tools as I've used them for more of my life. But uh, uh, hand tools have a, a certain amount more fun. The next thing is cutting that notch I was just talking about. It is basically roughed out with a router and Leo has a whole jig on this. I'll let him show that in one of his videos. You've got to go check it out. Then come in, clean it up with a chisel, and it's ready to go in the boat. One frame is ready to go in the boat. And there are 44 frames that need to be built for this thing. And this is a lot of work. Um, I, I do not envy Leo and how many hours and hours and years this boat is going to take to restore. But it will definitely be a labor of love. And I'm hoping to come back sometime in the future and help out with this. But for now, that's it for me. So there you have it. This has been a ton of fun. I have been enjoying every moment here on the project. There's so many cool things to see and do, and I'm looking forward to possibly coming back in the future. So thanks for having me, Leo. Oh, you're very welcome. Thanks a lot for your help. I really appreciate it. This has been and a blast. Uh, hopefully see you again. <laughs> Definitely. Cool. So I do want to say a huge thank you to all the patrons on Patreon. Uh, thanks for supporting the channel and helping make this more than it is today. If you want to help out with that or buy t-shirts and card scrapers, I have more information to that down below. So that's about it for today. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Cheers.